Cube leaves no person behind with punitive taxes. Finance Minister Mthuli Cube announced a $59.5 trillion budget for 2024 on Thursday, raising the price of services and attempting to widen the tax base to shore up the government's finances. The main opposition labeled his budget anti-people after he increased toll gate fees by 150% and also nearly doubled the cost of a passport. Cube maintained that his budget is seeks to consolidate and entrench the stability to facilitate economic transformation and preserve disposable incomes. The budget would be financed through projected Z$51.2 trillion tax revenues and Z$2.7 trillion non-tax revenue. The 2023 budget was Z$4.2 trillion. The fiscal policy thrust for the 2024 national budget is guided by the need to maintain a sustainable budget deficit within the SADC macroeconomic convergence threshold of not more than 3% of GDP. Fiscal restraint and tight monetary policy, together with a healthy current account position, provides the necessary conditions for currency and price stability, he said. Cube said the budget for 2024 gives priority to infrastructure spending, government wages and preserving disposable incomes. The total budget financing gap amounts to Z$9.2 trillion, comprising a budget deficit of Z$4.3 trillion 1.5% of GDP and amortization of loans and maturing government securities estimated at Z$4.9 trillion. The deficit will be financed through domestic and external borrowing, he said. He said ministries, government departments and agencies submitted funding bids of over Z$110 trillion. Against the available envelope of Z$58.2 trillion. Cube gave the highest budget allocation to the security services followed by education and health, in what the main opposition citizens coalition for change said showed that the government values guns more than equipping hospitals improving schools or feeding the nation security forces play an important role of protecting the country's territorial integrity national interest and sovereignty over land and airspace against both internal and external aggression Cube said as he allocated the sector Z$8.6 trillion which he said was for their remuneration, food rations, operational equipment and infrastructure maintenance. Cube said the 2024 budget prioritizes provision of quality and easy access to education and other learning opportunities for children. In this regard, Z$8 trillion has been set aside for the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education for teaching and learning materials as well as teacher capacitation at primary and secondary education level. This includes resources for the procurement of sanitary wear for disadvantaged girls, he said. Z$6.3 trillion will go to the Ministry of Health and Child Care for the provision of the requisite tools of trade such as adequate working space, manpower, drugs and medical supplies across the value chain. The Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Development received Z$4.3 trillion. Cube said economic growth is expected to slow down to 3.5% in 2024, mainly owing to the anticipated impact of the El Nino phenomenon being forecasted for the 2023-24 summer cropping season on agricultural output, as well as declining mineral commodity prices attributable to the global economic slowdown. The domestic economy is now projected to grow by 5.5% in 2023, a slight upward revision from the August projection of 5.3%, on account of better-than-expected output in agriculture. In particular, tobacco, wheat and cotton, he told MPs the positive growth of 3.5% in 2024 will be driven by mining plus 7.6% and accommodation and food services plus 6. 9%, while the agriculture sector is projected to contract by minus 4.9%. Cube said in order to raise resources to finance road infrastructure, he proposed an upwards review of the strategic reserve levy by 0 US dollars. 0.3 and 5 cents per liter of diesel and petrol, respectively, with effect from January 1, 2024.
the minister announced shock increases in road tolls, vehicle registration and passport fees. A return trip from Harare to Bulawayo will see a motorist driving a family sedan pay 50 US dollars at toll gates after he increased toll fees from 2 US dollars to 5 US dollars on the major highways, Harare Beat Bridge Road and Plumtree Harare Mutare Road. Tolls on other roads will cost 4 US dollars. Additional revenue generated from the above measures will be ring-fenced towards road infrastructure development, he said. An ordinary passport currently costing 120 US dollars goes up to 200 US dollars. And registering a family sedan will now cost 100 US dollars from 80 US dollars. Revenue derived from the increased fees will be remitted to the Consolidated Revenue Fund, Nkub said. Nkub introduced a levy of 0 US dollars. 0 to per gram of sugar contained in beverages, excluding water, with effect from January 1, 2024. He said funds from this levy will be ring fence for therapy and procurement of cancer equipment. Homeowners whose properties have a value of 100,000 US dollars or more must pay a wealth tax equal to 1% of the value of their property. Resources derived from the levy will be ring fenced towards urban infrastructure development. In particular roads, water, sewer and community health centers. Principal private residential properties owned by elderly persons above 70 years will, however, be exempt from the tax. He said. He said Zimbabwe exported goods worth 5.2 billion US dollars in the first nine months of the year. Exports are expected to end the year at 7.3 billion US dollars, up from 7 billion US dollars in 2022. This was due to higher exports of tobacco, lithium, and diamonds. The government will convert the current 300 US dollars COVID-19 and cushioning allowances that civil servants are getting into pensionable salaries. Starting January, Cube said. The tax-free pay threshold is now Z$750,000, but critics said that was almost the equivalent of US$100 and does not cover most workers. Cube said Zimra would be empowered to go to banks and security companies which hold safety deposit boxes for companies and individuals and inspect the contents in a push to force owners to pay taxes and use the banking system. Mthulin Cube's punitive taxes leave no person and no place behind. The only thing left is to tax babies for being born. The entire budget is anti-people, anti-investment, anti-growth and anti-productivity. They've destroyed the economy and now want to take it out on the people. It's a mess, CCC MP Fadzei Mahia said. The budget was presented in our unstable Zimbabwe dollar notwithstanding that the economy has largely dollarized meaning that it's a tabulation of figures that will be meaningless by the end of 2024 when these amounts are eroded by inflation. Economist Tinoshi Murepita said Nkub's budget showed that the government was desperate to raise money. Why is Nkub scrounging around for revenue in a purportedly growing economy? All these taxes have been tried elsewhere and only result in a parallel or as they say black market. They accelerate the informalization of the economy and punish those that are law-abiding, Murepita said. Treasury is desperate. In their desperation they've increased avenues for corruption. When the Intermediated Money Transfer Tax IMTT was introduced, it was 11% of revenue. It's now 5.4% and falling. How? The market is now using cash dollars. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.